So I'm uh, Emric. I'm a software engineer and a contributor to i3, uh, especially si uh, i3 uh, side tools that come with uh, the window manager. So i3 is a window, a tiling window manager. Uh, let me begin with a quick poll. So you, who's using i3 already? <laughs> Quite amazing. We love you guys. <laughs> who's using a similar window tiling window manager? Yeah, so quite some. Yeah. You should switch to i3. <laughs> so what's a window manager? Well, you know it, but I, I should say that it's the software that controls the pl placement and appearance of the windows that you opened. What's a tiling window manager? It's a window manager that is aimed at non-overlapping frames that, give, oops, that gives you uh, full control uh, on uh, how you open the windows and uh, it, with uh, no waste of space because of the full screen by default and uh, the arrangement of the windows that is uh, fit uh, for the full screen and with a clean and predictable organization. Basically, that's what we want to avoid, uh, a window nightmare, right? And this is what I want. This is kind of an unfair comparison because there is some more window open, but you get the idea. Before I do a little demo of i3, sorry guys that you already use i3, you probably uh, know how it works. Some i3 facts. The, the first thing is um, uh, it started out as a successor of WM2, maybe some of you know. It's written from scratch in C. It uses XCB as an API for X uh, server. Uh, it's, uh, one of its core principles is uh, only accepting uh, well-readable and well-documented code. And uh, another core principle, the most important to me, is don't be bloated, don't be fancy. So this is important because it can trigger some passionate discussions on uh, GitHub because people want their PR to, or their feature requests to be accepted and sometimes they're not. Um, I understand the frustration behind that, b behind there, but uh, it's a good principle because you know that when you upgrade i3, it's going to remain the same, it's going to remain the core i3 we like. How do you install it? Well, you install the package. Uh, you have uh, this uh, first screen that, uh, w when is the first time you generate your configuration, it's a basic configuration that comes with all the default bindings, and uh, it's ask you for the mod key that you want to use. So the mod key is the very, very important uh, fact about i3. It's going to give you uh, the, the, the shortcut you're going to use to, um, to control i3. So usually you want to use the window key because otherwise, anyway, in, in i3 it's uh, just useless. And you log out and select i3 as uh, your window manager. So that's cool because I'm al already using i3, so I can um, uh, already show you how it works. So let's say uh, I'm just going to start this little tool that will give you a feedback on the, the, the keys I'm, I'm typing. So let's say I, I want to open a terminal. So I'm going to use a mod key plus D. It's opening the uh, uh, D menu on the top of the screen. Uh, that gives you uh, uh, a nice interface to start the binaries that are on, on, in your path. So let's say I want to start a terminal. I use Terminator. It split the screen in half. Let's say now I want to open uh, another terminal. Uh, that's cool because i3 is uh, aimed at developers, so I, uh, the terminals are the the window you open the most, I suppose. So you just open with uh, mod key plus enter. So you see, it nicely split the screen, but well, now it's a bit overloaded, right? So I'm going to close, run uh, terminal, and I'm going to toggle between the uh, horizontal and vertical splitting and open a new terminal, and now it opens uh, on the bottom right of the screen. So let's say now I'm uh, following a tutorial on Firefox, so I want to move that uh, terminal on the bottom of the screen. So I just use the uh, mod key shift and down arrow, and I balance the uh, uh, terminal on the bottom of the screen. I can now use mod plus R to uh, trigger the resize mode. You can see there is a little, little feedback on the bottom left of the screen to tell you that, that tells you that you are uh, in, in the resizing binding mode. And using the arrow key, you can uh, resize the terminal. 
Now, another interesting concept is the um, uh, workspaces. So let's say that you've written a lot of code and you want to throw that terminal into a, a, new, um, a, a new workspace. So you just um, uh, press mod key shift and two and then it throws the terminal in workspace two. So I'm back on full screen with Firefox and I got a new workspace that is open. It's here. Well, I, I shouldn't use the mouse. Um, <laughs> that's the main point, right? Um, so the mod, mod key and the, the numbers, um, it, so you can navigate between the workspaces. How cool. Um, there is another mode as well. So let's say I open three terminal, but I want uh, I, I don't like the splitting mode. I prefer the tab mode. There is a tab mode that is just triggered like that. And so you can navigate between the uh, different tabs using the same uh, uh, shortcuts as if it was in split mode. There is a stack mode as well, which is very similar. Anyway, I, I never use them. I don't know about you, but I, I just use the split mode and use the workspaces. Okay, let me get back to the presentation. So how do I, do I lock the screen then? Well, there is a little tool that is called i3lock. You just launch it like that and it locks the screen. You unlock the screen, you're gonna see my wonderful password there. Yeah. <laughs> so you just uh, use i3lock and uh, bind a shortcut to it if you want. Uh, I don't really like the, um, uh, the VI-like uh, um, navigation keys. I prefer to bind it to some uh, other features. So mod plus L is locking for me. So a little bit more advanced usage. So what if you want to customize i3 status output? So first, I'm going to show you what is i3 status because I didn't show you. This is the, the status bar that comes uh, out of the box with i3 and it's uh, displayed at the bottom of the screen. So I'm going to show you in the terminal how it looks like. That's cool. Um, what if you want to um, uh, display your own uh, your own output. So you pick the wrapper that comes uh, out of the box with uh, i3 stages. You uh, do what you want with, with that. So let's say for me, uh, I live in Paris, I want to display the uh, status of the, the metro. I'm, I want to display that. It's usually red here. <laughs> so, and what I do is uh, edit the configuration. Oops. Go to the status and put the wrapper there uh, after the um, after the i three status. So I uh, reload i three using uh, mod shift and R, and there we go. You got this status of uh, your of the the subway. So yeah, that is static for the demo, but. There, there is code that works if you want to try it out. Um, okay. Another thing, uh, you, you want maybe to customize the, uh, the naming of your workspaces. So, once again, I, I've pre-filled all the details because you know demos. So, I reload, uh, I reload the um, configuration there. And now, well, nothing happened, that's normal, because the new binding for mod plus one is that one. So I'm gonna throw Firefox to the new, um, uh, the new workspace, and yeah, that's so cool. Another interesting feature is configuration mode. So I've shown you already the resize mode that triggers a new binding uh, for you to define. That's what I've used for controlling the volume. So let me show you an output of i3 I uh, status first. So the volume is displayed here, is displayed as well uh, on the bottom right. So let's say um, I want to um, uh, mute the volume. I, I've got this, uh, I've got this uh, configuration mode uh, configured already and I bound, I've bound zero to mute and unmute. And uh, you can control the volume with uh, these two uh, keys. So this is 
how you do that. So that's very simple. Uh, that's one of the nice features of uh, i3 is that the configuration file is, uh, c contains all the default bindings that you can, uh, that you can modify and you can do uh, some advanced configuration uh, very easily. Taking screenshot, yeah. So you, you cannot do that by default with uh, i3, so you have to install, I use Scrot for instance. Uh, I've bound uh, mod plus p, mod shift plus p to, uh, uh, to take uh, a screenshot. So let, let me just show you that it's not fake. Uh, I'm going to the, uh, uh, to the folder in which the screenshots are, are taken. So I just do mod plus p and I've got a nice screenshot of what I've just done. Change the background. Yeah, so useful. You install fair and you modify uh, your configuration to uh, display the, the, this very nice picture, picture of the uh, Yosemite uh, Natural Park. And then, yeah, you've got this background. That's amazing, right? So, as a summary of this presentation, it's a powerful but simple tool. It's highly customizable, and uh, it uh, allows you to, uh, uh, to really nicely uh, open a lot of windows and control uh, without a lot of efforts and resizing how these windows are displayed and organized between uh, them. It's an active community, so why don't you join? If you know how to uh, code in C, you are very welcome to uh, fix bugs and to propose new features. So that, that's it for my presentation. I'm a bit early. Uh, thank you very much.